So the chants that you just heard there, Jin Jian as a D, or women, life, freedom, is a phrase born out of the Kurdish liberation movement. It has now become a rallying cry across Iran after the death of Masa Amini, a 22-year-old Iranian Kurdish woman who died after being detained by Iran's so-called morality police. Now, she was said to be in a violation of the country's strict dress code by wearing her hijab or headscarf improperly. The news of Masa Amini's death last week immediately ignited protests across Iran, and women have been at the forefront of this movement. In fact, many women in Iran are protesting by also cutting off their hair and burning their compulsory headscarves in opposition to Iran's law that has been put in place for over four decades. Amnesty International is reporting that they have collected evidence of Iranian security forces, uh, unlawful use of birdshot and other metal pellets, tear gas, water cannon, and beatings with batons to disperse protesters. At least nine people have been killed since these demonstrations spread. As footage of Iranian women burning their hijabs go viral, Iran is experiencing a near total internet blackout, Instagram and WhatsApp, which protesters have relied heavily on to get their world out, word out to the world, have been blocked by the Iranian regime. With a violent crackdown against demonstrators ongoing, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi addressed the UN General Assembly but he never addressed the protests inside his country. Instead, he said this. Uh, the Islamic Revolution of Iran was the realization of the movement of the people of Iran towards justice and fairness. How ironic. The death of Masa Amini was a direct result of laws that were put into place after the Islamic Revolution in Iran. Where is the justice for Masa's family? The courage of the women leading these protests cannot be overstated. See, we find ourselves at an inflection point in human history. In India, women are fighting against a state's ban on women wearing hijabs. In Iran, women are protesting the forced wearing of that very same headscarf. And here in the U.S., well, we know what Republicans are doing to women. See, from Iran to India to right here in America, women globally are fighting for their rights in the midst of this rising oppression. They are fighting for control of their bodies from governments, ideologues, and religious extremists. And while that struggle takes on many different forms, we must recognize the fight for women's rights is universal, and we must stand up for these rights here at home and abroad. Joining me now is Negara Mortasavi, an Iranian-American journalist and political analyst. She is host of the Iran podcast. Uh, Negara, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Masa Amini's father told BBC News that uh, Iran is lying when they say Masa Amini's health problems uh, contributed to her death, saying in part, quote, she never had any medical conditions, she never had surgery. Um, what more can you tell us about the circumstances that we know or the families alleging about Masa Amini's death? Well, Ayman, we know that Masa Amini was stopped when um, visiting Tehran when she got off the metro, arrested or detained by the morality police, and then taken to a station. There's a video, edited video, that was published later by the police forces, essentially alleging that they didn't do uh, commit any violence. But what angers people is that they have time and again see the violence of the morality police in past instances, video after video and images of women being violently and brutally arrested, thrown into police vans and taken to detention. So even though we may not know the exact circumstances of what led to her, that exact moment of her death, What's a fact is that she died in the custody of a force that has been violent to, men, to women many times before. And I think it's anger uh, of women that's been building up because they see themselves in Masa Amini. Men see their own sisters in Masa Amini. And a lot of people are coming out saying, this could be us, this could be any of us, and this could have happened to, to any of us. So I think that's the kind of uh, outpouring in the anger that yeah. you're seeing and the sympathy and the solidarity by the protesters. Let me ask you about the, where this goes from here, because during a news conference today here in New York, President Ibrahim Raisi warned that acts of chaos are unacceptable. Uh, and we all remember what happened three years ago. 300 people were killed in Iran's last major protest movement. How are Iranians responding to that rhetoric? Where do you think this movement goes from here? 
Well, Iranian women, what's incredible is that we see a lot of women leading these protests, very symbolic images. It's essentially women coming out to ask for their basic rights and dignity and to be treated like equal citizens. It's, it's really images of bravery and courage of these young women, and it's incredible. But then at the same time, as you said, we've seen in past years that the state is willing to use violence to crack down on protests. In 2019, it was essentially brought down an iron fist to, to crack down and, as they call it, wrap up the protest. So with internet disruption, with the violent images that we're seeing, I'm afraid we're going down that path. So I wouldn't be surprised to see even more violence on the, the streets as they're trying to um, minimize the protests across Iran. Yeah, absolutely. Scary thought, given what we've seen in the past and uh, what this regime has shown it is capable of. Uh, Nagar Mortazavi, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight.